Good morning. On this first day of spring, 2021, we begin reading the Gospel of Luke. And Luke starts his Gospel, the first four verses. Uh, he tells us, Since many have undertaken to set down an orderly account of the events that have fulfilled, been fulfilled among us, just as were handed down to us by those from the beginning who were eyewitnesses and servants, I decided, after investigating thoroughly, so Luke did a careful research of all of the life and times of Jesus and his stories. So after investigating everything carefully from the very first, I wrote an orderly account for you and any names as most excellent Theophilus, who was most likely a, a higher ranking Roman official. And he says, I write it so that you may know the truth concerning the things about which you have been instructed. So this Theophilus uh, has been taught about Jesus. And so Luke begins this gospel with those words. And we know also that the same person that wrote the gospel of Luke wrote the book of Acts. Acts verse one, chapter 1 verse 1 says, in the, first, in the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning. And then the book of the Acts of the Apostles, of course, talks about the Acts of the Apostles. And we'll get into that later on. But uh, the Gospel of Luke uh, begins this way, and then we have the story of the birth of John the Baptist. Uh, the angel Gabriel comes to Zechariah, and so we, um, we, we have the, the birth of John the Baptist and Jesus. We have the genealogy of Jesus traced all the way back to Adam. Um, there's much more inclusion of uh, the despised Samaritans. You know, Jesus talks about them and to them. There is um, um, more activity by the women. I mean, the women seem to have more a more promising or prominent place, especially um, in the Jewish world and the Gentile world. You know, wouldn't have seen that you know much, but but the women and the Gentiles. You know, these non-Jewish people were were shown to be welcome to the gospel of Jesus Christ, and so we have. You know, like the first nine chapters is, you know, kind of, you know, the beginning and then and, and a lot of Jesus' er, teachings and work. And then verses, chapters 9 through 18 um, include a lot of the parables of Jesus. There are more parables in, in uh, Luke, I think, than the other Gospels. And then we have a, quite an extensive journey to Jerusalem toward the end of the, uh, end of the Gospel. And, and, of course, the... Uh, you know, the, the final week of, of Jesus' life and everything going on there. The, this gospel has probably the fewest uh, quotations from the Hebrew Scriptures, our Old Testament, since it was written, you know, more or less toward a Gentile audience that wouldn't have been as familiar with, with, the, with the Hebrew Scriptures and with the prophecies there. Um, so... This Luke, who was not an eyewitness to Jesus at all, he, he, he probably never met him, never saw him, but he did, um, he learned about him. And, and as he learned and heard about Jesus, he wanted to more know, know more. So he did a thorough investigation. And he wrote this book that we call the Gospel of Luke, and it has been referred to by many different people as probably one of the most beautifully written stories, one of the most beautifully written books in all of history. And I think that that, too, is a testament to the, to the wonder of God's love and God's grace, is that this book, the, the story of the life and times of Jesus Christ, has been called, you know, the most beautifully written book in the world. I mean, and it's, it's definitely the most beautiful story, the most important story for us, the story of the life and times of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> and so, uh, with that much of an introduction, um, we read just through verse 20 of the chapter 1 this morning, and I talked a little bit already about verses 1 through 4, and mentioned that Zechariah you know, the, um, was, a high, was a priest, and it was... This, this group that Zechariah was one of the priests of, I mean, the priests were broken into different groups, you know, different tribes and different groups. But at this point in history, Zechariah's um, priestly order, so to say, was in charge of um, some of the 
priestly acts at the, at the temple. And it says that Zechariah was uh, selected, he was chosen by lot, um, as was the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. And this sanctuary of the Lord was the area behind the temple, in the, in the, behind the curtain, rather, in the temple. And this curtain that just a few days ago in the Gospel of Mark was torn, ripped from top to bottom. But it was this curtain that, that separated God from the people. And behind this curtain was a, a very sacred place that very few people went and only on certain occasions. So here on this special occasion, Zechariah went to burn the incense, to offer the incense to God as, as the offering for sacrifices and, and all of that, as was their custom. And so here he finds himself back there, only one back there, and all of a sudden an angel of the Lord appears. And and it says he's terrified, he's overwhelmed, and, and the angel says to him, don't be afraid, because I have come from God with good news for you. And Zechariah and Elizabeth, we know we're both quite elderly. I mean, I'm assuming we pretty much know this story. Most of us that are listening and following in have, have, been, have heard the story of, of Zechariah in the temple. And, and, um, but the angel says to him, you know, your wife will have a son, and you will name him John. And you know, Zechariah questions that because of because of his age and Elizabeth's age, and they haven't been able to have children. And verse fourteen, the angel Gabriel says, "You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth." And I thought about that. You will have joy and gladness, you know, with the birth of a son, with the birth of a child. And <clears throat> I remember when Cheryl and I were expecting our firstborn and our secondborn. And, and you know, the, the joy that came at their birth and, and of our grandchildren as well and, and of helping them learn things and exploring with them and just, you know, some of the things they do, you might, might, they might drive you crazy sometimes, but, you know, overall the joy and the gladness that, that they bring you know, is so overwhelming and, um, and I, and I appreciate that, you know, that, that Luke wrote that in here. You will have joy and gladness, but then also many will rejoice at his birth. He will be great in the sight of the Lord. And then there's some qualifications that he has to show for that way. But verse 16 says, He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the righteous, to make the people ready for the Lord. And so here, Luke is telling us that Gabriel, the angel, told Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist, that his son John would turn the hearts of many toward the, toward the Lord, that, that he would be like Elijah. And the Hebrew Scriptures talked about Elijah coming before the Messiah. And so here we have that, that fulfillment you know, I mean, I just got done saying that, you know, Luke doesn't, you know, talk a lot about Hebrew scripture and Hebrew prophecy that way. But here we have the angel Gabriel telling Zechariah that his son will be, will have the power and the, and the call of Elijah, the ability, the, the, the spirit and the grace of Elijah to make ready, to make straight the pathway of the Lord. And, and that's what John does. And we're going to read more about the story of John the Baptist in probably, I don't know if you remember, chapter 3 or 4, we get to that finally in Luke. But um, we, we know that uh, since Zechariah didn't really believe the angel Gabriel, he says, well, how will I know this will be? Gabriel said, since you haven't believed, you know, the sign for you will be that you will be mute. You won't be able to talk. And that's where we end with today. You know that uh, he says you will be mute, unable to speak until the day that these things are clear, until the day of the birth of your son. And I'm not going to get into that anymore because that's, that'll be tomorrow's story. But it's just a reminder for us that as we begin this Gospel of Luke, as we begin reading any of the books in the Bible, it's, it's beneficial to know a little bit of the history about 
how it was written, who it was written for, and the audience. And, and since Luke's gospel was written, you know, with the audience of the Gentiles, I mean, that's us. We are the Gentiles. We are non-Jews. I mean, we've been Christians, I mean, maybe for generations in our families. And maybe some, some of you are, are new Christians, I, you know. But um, the book was written so that we might, we might know and believe and we might see in John the Baptist, Elijah come, and that we might see in Jesus when, when we get to learning about him, that he is the Lord that has come. And, and, uh, and in the Hebrew world, in the Jewish realm, you know, genealogy was very important. So Luke traces all the way back to, to Adam. And um, we, we don't see that in, in any other gospel, trace that far back. We see some genealogy of Jesus, but it, it's important to know um, for, for the Israelites and for the Gentiles to know that you know, since the very beginning of time, when God created Adam and Eve and when they were expelled from the garden because of the first sin, you know, God has always set out to, or he has always been open and ready to, to forgive and to welcome people back into his presence. And this is Jesus coming into the world to return us to the presence of God. May you live joyfully in his presence today.